What if we made a map so perfect for the Glaive Lord that it would be considered overpowered? Well, we're gonna find the answer to that today. Over here in the map editor, of course, the perfect map for the Glaive Lord would have to be a circle, such that its old glaives will be doing damage to balloons at all times. While I'm already here, now is a good time to show some of the new features that map editor got recently. One being sandbox, you can actually, instead of having to back out, save the map, and then play to test stuff out, with one click of a button, you can easily set up exactly what you want. So, of course, in order to make the best and longest map possible for the Glaive Lord, we'd have to go with a 502 cross path that would make its Orbo Glaives reach a little bit higher. So, let's just test, uh, well, a test balloon and see. Right now, it's obviously uh, the map is too big. But this is actually fine, because my goal for these Orbital Glaives is that I want it to hit Moabs, but it's actually okay if it doesn't hit Balloons, which have a, hit a small hitbox. Reason being, when it comes to late game, the HP of the Moabs increase, but not the Srams. They always stay the same. They do go get faster, but the biggest concern is more the Moabs over uh, the Ceramics. So I like to believe that sacrificing the Srams being hit by the Orbitals is worth the extra track length that we can make. Also, let me just test the mob again. So you see that, just looking at the uh, DPS tick, there are still some spots of the track where uh, the orbitals aren't touching mobs and DDTs, so uh, that's a little bit of a problem. And actually, fun fact, while testing the perfect map for the Glaive Lord, I uh, came upon a discovery with the orbitals, so uh, you probably are wondering, why don't I give it range buffs if it doesn't reach well? Now you see the uh, base range of the Glaive is absolutely massive. But I want you to watch again very carefully. Send a mob out, and watch the DPS. You see, if it's not rapidly increasing every 0.1 seconds, then that means the orbitals aren't touching it. And so, uh, I'm 99.99% .99 sure now that getting range buffs on the uh, boomerang does not increase the range of the orbitals. There is no way to increase it. So unfortunately, that's going to limit a lot of the Glaive Lord's power. Big rip. Anyways, let's reset and make the path a little bit smaller. Okay, how about now? Looks good enough to me. So now that we have the perfect circle, we have to replicate it 30 more times. Yay, much fun. I think to aid myself, what I'll also do is I'm going to add a prop where those uh, quote-unquote endpoints are. Just so that I have a consistent way to stack up the notes every time. I know I could just look at the map, but... A little bit more visual help won't hurt. So basically, I need to move these a little closer. You see this? This is what I'm looking for. Now for the top side. Looks like the top left one is a little bit off, so let's shift it a bit to the right. And how about now? Perfect. Anyways, enjoy a time lapse of this very monotonous work I'm going to need to put in for the next however many minutes or so. Yes, and finally, a maximum no count reached. I was wondering when it would end, so let's add the last node, uh, somewhere. And then I guess have it branch off like this, while also trying to keep the shape. Now, before we finalize the map, a couple more things. Some of you guys mentioned the last time I made the perfect map for the Crossroad Master, and I had a problem with the temple attacking balloons and then taking away pops. Why don't I add a line of sight blocker, aka the no dart zone, so that nothing ends up passing through? Wouldn't that help the pops? Well, let me just show you, for example, if I do this. And let me show you that sadly, it does not work. Once you upgrade the temple, the temple just has way too high of a height. And you see, it's still able to attack. Pretty sure there's no way to get this to work, but if anybody knows how, then please let me know. Also, a new feature in Map Editor that might be pretty useful is this button here. Straightens out the lines of the area. So now you can define them more precisely. Great change by Ninja Kiwi. Love to see it. Now we can actually make true vertices. Last thing I'll add here is water. You'll see why in a second. Everything else here is just purely for decoration. And one last time here, let's just sandbox. I don't know when my circle turned into a partial oval shape, but hopefully that doesn't uh, make a difference. Send out a mob, and if this thing does not do constant damage, then I will be disappointed. But so far, so good. Yep, the oval shape is not a problem. I think it's uh, been staying constant damage-wise. With that, I think we are good to go. And now here is our map in its mighty glory. Similar to the run with the Crossroad Master, I'm going to play this on Chimps mode. Just for some fun factor in building up the buffs that we're going to get. Now hopefully I get this boomerang placement right. The gingerbread cookie was supposed to help with that. 
think it's close enough. We'll, we'll find out soon enough, I guess. Also, you have got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> really? What if I change the arms? There we go. That'll get one of the yellows. That's all we need. This is probably going to stay a problem, because I don't think any of these upgrades increase the uh, projectile speed of the boomerangs. Well, good luck, I guess. Another round here. With lots of lupin. Now, just for some reference points, the Crossbow Master's greatest map got us to about round, or, round 170 on Chimps mode. So it'll be interesting to see if we can get past that with Glaive Lord. I think it'll be a little bit harder, though, because, again, the length of the map. Even though on this map, the Glaive Lord hits 100% of the time, the map, the, the length of the map is probably three times shorter than it was for the Dart Monkey. And that gave the Dart Monkey, like, cooldown, wiggle room to breathe. Like, if it was hitting its Pierce Cap or anything like that. Although, I guess, in the Glaive Lord's case, Pierce Capping doesn't matter because its Pierce is infinite. I guess only time will tell. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have kept some of the blockers on the map. Like, the line of sight blockers, because it's not just the Super Monkey that I need to block projectiles of. I, I also could block Overclock, although I guess it doesn't really matter. Not like I'm seriously trying for an all-pops, but it probably would have helped a little bit. For now, I'll be safe for Glaive Lord. Watch as the uh, more Glaives shreds everything in its path. Even mobs, too. It needs a lot of time to pop one of them down, but luckily, uh, this map is just long enough. Out of curiosity, I'm just going to count how many nodes uh, it runs through. So each half circle is an extra node. Five, six, eight, ten, twelve nodes out of 33. So uh, actually a good, good amount of wiggle room to go. Nothing but pure satisfaction so far. Now we get Glaive Lord, and now we'll watch these mobs die within one node. Next up on the agenda is Overclock, and the play to save money is always to rush Support Temple as soon as possible, so that every subsequent upgrade you buy is 20% cheaper. And credits to someone in my comment section, because I realized I could have done a smart play in terms of saving money. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to save for Ultra Boost. Last time, I actually went for Support Temple first before buying Ultra Boost so that I could save 20% on the 7k, which is, well, quite a lot of money saved. But why don't I just simply do the following here? Buy Ultra Boost and then use that to sacrifice to the temple. And in doing so, I don't have to spend 50k on other stuff to reach that requirement. And I don't have to buy back Ultra Boost because this thing will already have 10 stacks and the Overclock has the same effect as the Ultra Boost. And again, just in case you didn't know already, the Overclock and Ultra Boost do not stack. So in essence, this play pretty much saves us 50,000 minus the amount of money I would have saved getting Ultra Boost, which is like, what, 15,000? Now we have an extra 35,000 to work with. Uh, now also to redo that Dart Monkey run. Now that I know how to play more optimally. Half kidding, though. And now let me slow down for some of these rounds here, just so you guys can see. The Glaive Lord, if it was an S tier tower, pretty much beating everything within a couple nodes, even ZMDs. I think what, what you want to do is because the Glaive Lord's main attack has that damage over time effect. You want to leave it in strong. I mentioned before, too, that you also want to change targeting so that it doesn't reapply the stack to the same tower, because it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't technically stack. It's a unique DOT in that you only have to attack a balloon once for it to get damage taken for 10 seconds, and you can increase that amount. So yeah, goodbye round 98. You will not be missed. Now how long does it take for a bat to die? How much DPS are we getting? 300 or so, but again, we have a long way to go with the buffs and all that. There's 10 stacks. Now time to set up the temple defense. I don't want to sacrifice any of these villages here. Because then I gotta spend money to, to get them back. So I'll just do one village here. And then I'll place my super monkey here, for example. Where it will only sacrifice these two guys. We'll just do it now. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention what this water was for. So originally, it would have been for a monkey sub. In, in case the boomerang well happened to whiff all those yellows. And there was no way to get around it. The one time ambidextrous rings are actually useful. But yeah, I guess the water is also there for Energizer, although uh, I probably should have uh, put some water near where I'm going to put the temple. Because now I'm going to have to spend an extra 7k without discounts. Also, the main reason why I can go for this Ultra Boost into Temple Maneuver now is that I tested and uh, they did fix that bug that was prevalent in the game a while back. Where resetting around would get rid of the Ultra Boost stacks if you sold the tower. It's probably been long fixed by now, but I was just paranoid, you know? All of our stacks will be safe, trust. Unfortunately, we're going to round 119 without the temple still, so 
we'll have to do just a little bit of micro. A little bit of micro in the ring, just to make sure we're getting DOT in all three of them at once. Should pop in time, right? I didn't count, but... At best, I'd say the balloons got halfway. So far, so good. And there it is now, enough money for the Sun Temple, and it's range upgrades to boot. 1-1. One, one. And now we should be getting a sizable DPS boost. The more balloons there are in the range, though, of course, the more DPS will do. 4,000, I think, is pretty rookie numbers. I've seen up to 20,000, I believe, at, at one point in this run so far. And we're still missing Homeland and the Oflux, don't forget. Friendly reminder that we need two overlocks to keep full uptime, otherwise we only get 75% uptime on the Tier 5 Tower. And let's slow it down here for uh, when the ZMGs pop. Are you noticing? 30,000, a new high. 32, pretty cool stuff I gotta say. And this round is gonna be heaven for the uh, Glaive Lord. Super, super dense. 40,000, a new high. I mean, it's still too soon to call, but something in me feels like this will perform better than the Crossbow Master. Maybe partially due to the fact that the reason Glaive Lord isn't so great in other game modes is because of the fact that there usually isn't the perfect bend on a map of Glaive Lord, unless we're talking about easy maps. But I'm talking about once you get to Advanced Expert, there are very few maps that the Glaive Lord can excel against. Because part of what makes maps hard is the lack of curves. Okay, skipping forward a lot because somehow my OBS crashed and it, I lost the last 15 rounds of footage. Unfortunate because uh, I wish I could have shown you how it looked like for round 140. But all I'll tell you is that it, it actually got pretty close. I counted like 28, 30 nodes that the f bat got through, including the insides. So pretty scary stuff. Since then, I bought a 420 Alchemist. Might as well buy it since it's really cheap, but there is one problem with it, as you see. Watch carefully once it, once it gets thrown on the uh, Glaive Lord. It's pretty much gone instantly. And that's because it's my belief that the orbital ticking actually eats up like one attack from the Alk buff. Because if you didn't know, the Alchemist times out. The buff times out after 40 shots with 400 and 55 with 420. That's why we, we bought the cross path so that it lasts just a little bit longer. Like as, as low as that uptime is now, just imagine it being even weaker with a 400. Also, since then, I bought a third of Discount Village because I need to get, you know, two villages, one called Arms, one Homeland. Working on the Homeland right now, but luckily, the Lave Lord is currently doing pretty good for itself, I would say. And, whoa, what just happened? Round 156, I died. That's not good. Because if I don't have Homeland yet, then I'm pretty sure I'm still far off from my true potential with the Glaive Lord. Maybe I shouldn't have gone for the Alp buff. Like, maybe that low uptime is pretty insignificant. Also, DPS. We're getting very close to six digits. And we'll definitely breach that mark if we somehow afford our uh, homeland defense. I think what I'm gonna do this round, it probably makes very little difference, but sure, we'll give a count pot. It gets extra range, and also extra DDT damage. And we'll also carefully use the called arms and overclock at the right time. And change targeting. I think I was probably slacking on that this round. Yikes, though. This is why we need a bigger map. I think if NK were ever to buff the Glaive Lord, I would love just for the orbitals, like a very simple buff would be for the orbitals to be affected by range buffs. Maybe that would make its weakness uh, less of a problem. Okay, that DT is fine. How about number two? Yeah, I'm on any time now. I could also use some Reju potions, but if I have to rely on that right now, I'm definitely not going to make it 20 more thousand. Please, please, please. Okay. DT's dead. Please. And just like that, we have escaped round 156, but barely. I'm also just going to use this time to refresh my game to show you that the uh, Ultra Boost stacks will stay, right? Right, game? And let's check. Yep, it's still there. This round has taken a while. I bet we're probably dead, aren't we? Well, watching carefully, uh, DDT is... Uh... Oh my god. So close. What could I do differently this round? I'm not sure what I'd do differently, but one more go at it. If it doesn't work, then that's a rip. So, yep. I goofed. Maybe I should have not gotten the second overclock and uh, just went straight for uh, Homeland Defense because I would have gotten it by now. I don't know. But that's disappointing because I can't even get a second Called Arms either. Save me. Okay, luckily I can buy Called Arms mid-round. And that should probably buy us, I don't know, five more rounds. But uh, I'm not going to be... At least I don't think I'm going to be able to get Homeland before I die again. Should pop much earlier, right? Leave on the first for DDTs, and... 
please. There we go. Good riddance to 159. If there's any other round with three or more bads, though, we are in equal trouble. Uh, four bads this round? Yup, it's probably over. Or is it? Again, I feel like because the uh, DOT shred effect doesn't get affected by buffs, it probably is pretty insignificant. So perhaps the difference between three and four bads isn't really uh, that big a deal. Alright, don't fail me now, Glaive Lord, don't fail me now. Oh my god, yep, it's over. I am now going to implement Mega Hacks. Basically, I just gave myself enough money for a homeland. And we're gonna stop there with buffs. This is pretty similar buffs to the Cross of Master, and we'll just see how long we can ride the Glaive Lord. I swear I haven't noticed a difference even with Homeland. They're still taking forever and ever to pop. So case in point, do not go for Glaive Lord for single target damage. It won't end in a good time. This last Homeland should finish the job though, right? Come on. Yup, and yup. Sheesh, this is taking forever even with one bad. And we're dead. I think that settles it. You get the point. Overall, the Glaive Lord popped a total of 64 million balloons uh, in the uh, 168 rounds. Uh, Temple only doing 4.6 of that million. What other towers would you want me to make perfect maps for? Let me know down below. And I'll certainly listen because Glaive Lord was one of the more popular choices.